side, we have a graphic that I want to put up now that can show our viewers just how unprecedented what we are watching in the United Kingdom is in terms of the modern era. It really hasn't been seen there in close to 200 years. You can see dating, uh, you know, this is the shortest tenure by a modern prime minister. You'd have to go back almost 200 years to get anywhere near that. How does this level of political turmoil impact those tens of millions of Brits? Well, hugely. I mean, uh, as, uh, as I've been saying, she was the sort of ultimate purist free marketeer who was defeated by the free market. Um, she um, will now be succeeded within a week by somebody else, which will mark Britain's fifth prime minister in six years. This is, you know, beating any Italian record of instability. It, Downing Street has turned into a revolving door. The notion that um, the Conservative Party will come up with a unity candidate, as Wilfred was discussing, is completely fanciful. The party is deeply split between people who think that what's wrong with Britain is that populism hasn't been tried. Just yeah. let that sink in. It hasn't been tried. And another part of the party that believes that the reason Britain's in such trouble is because of populism. In those circumstances, a unity candidate is impossible. And therefore, the next British prime minister isn't going to have much longer a shelf life than Liz trusted. So we're going to dive into more of those details there in just a moment. But Ambassador Dalder, I want to bring you into this and what it means for the U.S. and for our European allies, specifically as it relates to the shared war effort right now uh, in support of Ukraine. How will this negatively impact potentially support from the United Kingdom? Any sort of moment of doubt is potentially problematic. Yeah, it would be problematic. I think on, on, on that, that issue in particular, there, there seems to be a wide consensus both within the Conservative Party and with the opposition that support for Ukraine is something that uh, is just necessary. It needs to be done. Uh, it is likely to continue. Uh, the the the, uh, the steps have been taken, and I, I think the kind of training that is happening for Ukrainian soldiers in Britain, the kind of military assistance uh, that is that has been provided and will continue to be provided uh, to the Ukrainians uh, will continue. Uh, the bigger question really is the the stability of Britain as such, and the stability of what was a rock uh, in terms of the alliance at NATO, uh, our relationship with Europe and with the UK, having uh, the kind of turnover we're seeing politically now uh, and, the, and the uncertainty about where the country is going uh, in general on issues of the economy, relations with Europe, trade, all questions that are now halted once again uh, is the real problem. I think the Ukrainians are the only ones who can count on the UK remaining with them and so can the Russians. Then let me ask you, if I can, just on that topic very quickly, Mr. Ambassador, the House Republican leader, Kevin McCarthy, said that there is likely to be no blank check for Ukraine if Republicans take back the majority next year. So perhaps that uncertainty is more about what the American position will be if the Republicans win back the House. Yeah, it's a very unfortunate statement by uh, uh, by the leader of the House Republicans. Uh, Kevin McCarthy has voted consistently in favor of uh, Ukrainian support. So has the vast majority of his caucus. But it seems that uh, he is now being led by a small minority within his caucus rather than being the kind of leader one would hope. And more importantly, we have just released a public opinion survey uh, by the Chicago Council on Global Affairs, which demonstrates that the American public is four square behind behind uh, supporting uh, uh, Ukraine militarily, 58 percent things that we need to do it as long as it takes, no matter what happens on prices of food and fuel uh, in, uh, in the stores. Uh, that's a big number, and I hope that the Republicans, uh, whenever the election is over, come back to, the, to uh, supporting Ukraine. It's important yeah. for our freedom, it's certainly important for Ukraine. Heading into the cold weather months, the need there in Ukraine is as great now as it has ever been. Ed, I want to ask you back about what we're witnessing uh, taking place in London now. This immediate discussion after Liz Truss's departure was whether we might see Boris Johnson back in charge. Is that a real possibility? It is a real possibility. He is apparently flying back from a vacation in the Dominican Republic. 
um, and we'll, I, I guess, hear whether he's formally going to be standing or not. I mean, it would be the sort of most absurdist sort of twist of events that um, it was Boris uh, who delivered um, Liz Truss into Downing Street because he backed her. She was the loyalist. Her competitor, Rishi Sunak, was the one who brought Boris down by resigning as chancellor. So he was the stab in the back figure. Liz mm -hmm. Truss was Boris's friend. So Liz Truss is, is a, a Boris product. And if Boris is the cure to this disease, God knows what's happened to the state of medicine. Yeah, so just such a dramatic period of instability there. Wilfred, let me ask you, do we anticipate we would hear either from uh, King Charles, perhaps, Prince William, to make some kind of a public address to give the people of Britain a, a bit of stability right now? Well, we desperately are in need of, of stability, but but no, Peter, that won't come uh, from the monarch. Uh, has to stay out of politics. It would create some kind of constitutional crisis uh, if they did step specifically into it. But it, it is an interesting reminder the fact that uh, Liz Truss, of course, was appointed by a queen. She'll resign to a king, uh, and then we'll have our third prime minister in the space of a couple of months. There is a desperate need for stability here, and even if, and as Ed said, it's an extraordinarily big if, the Conservative Party manages to find a unity candidate in the short term. This is a party that will continue to tear itself apart. It's been in power since 2010. It's changed prime minister so many times. It's had massive issues that's torn it apart from Brexit to lockdown. Uh, and it's very hard to see long-term stability uh, with the current state of play. And that might require a general election and, and a more formal change of government. And yet, that definitely won't arrive in the short term. Wilfred Frost, Ed Luce, Evo Dalder, Mr. Ambassador, we thank all of you for your time and your expertise.